Podcast episode number 10, Suggestions by Cream Technology, on Draft National Policy, the Ministry of MSMEs. Analytics on Draft National Policy for MSMEs, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises in India. Copyright, Jeremy and Raja Iyer, all rights reserved. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic, mechanical, photocopy, recording, or any other except for brief quotations, not to exceed 250 words, without the prior permission of the author. In activity-based cost management, activity has a cost incidence, whereas in activity a cost consequence. Measure cost consequence now, now, now. Based on the bow theme, I shall present MSME's transformation by Cream Technology. I put in an action one, a reference number one for full details. Cream is an acronym for C for corporate governance, all for risk management, E for earnings, E for counting quality and M4 management quality. Establish corporate management operating system with everlasting metrics and benchmarks and measure costs of inaction. That would be the main theme for uh, MSME's uh, progress and growth. Check the cost of inaction. Analytics on draft national policy for MSMEs, micro, small and medium enterprises in India. The Ministry of uh, MSME Office of the Development Commissioner, Policy Division, by an office memorandum dated 9th February 2022, calling upon all the stakeholders, industry associations, MSME units, the general public, requesting them to provide their comments, suggestions on the draft national policy for MSMEs by 28th of February 2022. I, as a member of the general public, have submitted my suggestions and comments to the said authorities. Here I am. I would like to present to you what the draft policy is talking about. The draft policy paper uh, for MSMEs provides uh, four issue areas. Number one, need for policy. Number two, vision. Number three, objectives. And number four, action areas. I am looking into each one of them in my submission to the MSME minister, uh, ministry rather. And uh, I will present that uh, after analyzing what this draft national policy for MSME is uh, all about. The need for policy, the first one it says, there is a, a lack of convergence and synergy among various stakeholders. I think that uh, that fixes the, the entire need for policy. The policy is always, as I am of a said uh, recently, uh, policy accidents everywhere there's a problem. And, uh, and policy and politics is uh, more uh, as Boudreaux's Boudreaux's uh, Gali had said long back. Uh, need for policy is there, but uh, uh, it doesn't go through the process of what is needed between the various uh, stakeholders. So that would be my primary uh, work which had been done in terms of uh, uh, cream uh, technology. We shall look into it one by one. And this is the one which is in terms of uh, need for policy and the four issue areas. And every one of them I had uh, uh, taken into account in my submission to the Ministry of uh, MSME. In addition, the draft policy paper 
the ministry has made available. Information pertinent to Masami's transformation by way of six annexures. Let me share with you some salient points from these annexures. Annexure 1 highlights the recommendations of Sri Prabhat Kumar Committee 2017. Note, the committee examined the two suggested bases of redefining the MSMEs, that is, turnover and employment, and found that they do not add anything worthwhile over the present system. Two suggested bases of redefining the MSMEs, which are turnover and employment, and uh, they are not worthwhile. There are 51 such recommendations. These recommendations include several suggestions such as an apex authority under the chairmanship of the Prime Minister. The authority may be called the National MSME Authority. I think it is a good recommendation as Cream Technology is a dynamic database creation of the entire layers of MSMEs. We will examine it. Annexure 2 RBI Committee Findings and Suggestions Some of the points, the findings were Even after a journey of more than one decade the MSME sector is still posed with numerous challenges such as inadequate flow of funds in the sector, costly financing, lack of full swing procurement by government sector from MSMEs, delay in payments, etc. etc. There are about a dozen uh, recommendations. Number one is amelioration of liquidity crunch for the MSMEs by way of providing distressed asset funds with a corpus of INR 5000 crores. Number two, cash flow based lending, revising collateral, free loan limit from 10 lakhs of rupees to 20 lakhs of rupees. Credit guarantee scheme for MSMEs, etc. Like that, there are about 12. Cream technology looks into the financial stability of each and every MSMEs as submitted to the ministry. You will have a look at it. Annexure 3 International Best Practices in the SME Sector Some of the salient points at present countries across the world is taking various steps in formulating growth strategies for SMEs and ensuring them to move along with the pace of GDP. This section discusses about the selected best practices taken by uh, different countries for one access to easy finance during Corona pandemic. Number two, competitive SME policy themes and examples. Number three, best practices in digitalization support for SMEs. Number four, skill development of SMEs to improve retain competencies. And number five, protecting startups and scale ups. Cream technology is the most evocative and profound theory of management that not only enables the MSMEs to move along GDP, but ensures a GNH Gross National Happiness Index is prepared simultaneously. I submitted the GNH GDP combo best practices to the ministry. An extra four. Initiatives of states in MSME sector. Some of the salient points. States are one of the most important stakeholders as far as MSMEs are concerned. A robust MSME sector provides employment to the unemployed in the states and also helps the state's economy. They have always been a focus area, but MSMEs have 
start receiving increased attention in view of the realization of the potential in the overall development of the state. That's what it says. Cream Technology has published a blueprint for GSDP $1.5 trillion Gujarat economy. How the target of $1.5 trillion by 2024 can be reached. I've included the same in the submission to the Ministry on Draft Policy Suggestions. MSMEs shall play the pivotal role to reach their targets within the targeted year of 2024 for the states to progress and grow. An action of five deals with uh, legislation and uh, a regulatory framework for MSMEs in India. Some of the salient points. The micro, small and medium enterprises development MSMED Act was notified in 2006 to address different issues affecting MSMEs, entirely at the coverage and investment ceiling of the sector. The MSME Act seeks to facilitate the development of these enterprises as also enhance their competitiveness. Cream Technology provides a sustainability framework of management, sustainability of fiscal and ethical responsibility, ensuring accountability for fiscal assets as well as ethical assets. For sustainability of value system. What is crucial is to have a dynamic governance standards framework. The cream technology issues. The submission to the ministry takes note of it. Annexure 6 uh, it deals with access to finance, technology, marketing, and infrastructure to MSMEs. One of the salient points is the Ministry of MSME runs numerous schemes targeted at A. Providing credit and financial assistance, B. Marketing assistance and infrastructure development, and C. Technological and quality upgradation. Cream Technology offers an outgoing dynamic MSME transformation and considers MSMEs as a ground layer of immense strength and capability. MSMEs are shown the global opportunities that have arisen account of transition to green economy, adoption of I4.0 and how they could fit into a global hub of contracting the operations from specific countries becoming scope one, two, three compliant companies. An extra seven, inter-country reforms on MSME definitions. MSME definitions by number of employees uh, given for several countries they are of uh, fourfold, micro, small, medium, as well as large. It's good. Uh, China has uh, defined it, but not India, as an extra seven indicates. A cream technology is the most profound technology of embracing micro to macro toward a GDP calculator as a basic layer is measuring and tracking by EPP effort per person. So it's going to be a very important aspect of clean technology what it offers in terms of measuring uh, what a micro does, uh, MSME, uh, small and medium. I'm very happy about this uh, uh, fourfold uh, providing for the large because uh, it has to get connected with uh, the lowest rung to the uh, highest one. Draft national policy for micro.
small and medium enterprises in India, analytics vis-a-vis -vis cream technology. Let me summarize the four-ish areas of draft national policy for MSMEs. One, need for policy. Number two, vision. Number three, objectives. Number four, action areas. And we also dealt with uh, Annexure 1 to Annexure 7. The challenge, how India met the challenge, is quite a challenge. Looking at the draft national policy for MSMEs, bringing together for a common purpose, is the very essence of the challenge. The workforce comprising of millions of individuals are strewn all over the country and they were displaced on account of COVID-19. It is the greatest challenge any country could have faced, but India not only took the challenge by accommodating all, but provided uh, free food and ration for 800 million people. That continues even today in the month of March 2022 that I am talking about. That was the result of the policy the Prime Minister Modi took boldly. Today in 2022, we see the results of bubbling economic revival. I have dealt with in episode number 7, Transition to Green Economy, IMF World Economic Outlook Data Analytics, how India stands first in the real per capita output, despite its population, despite the huge workforce it has. So this is a very important part of it uh, by summarizing that the challenge whether MSMEs can meet. That is number one. Uh, two, uh, inherent capability of uh, MSMEs. The resilience shown by the M micro in MSMEs is quite noteworthy. So is the case in each value-added entities, small and medium enterprises. China classification is excellent, but India has not classified in terms of the number of employees, runs to nearly 110 million people. It is the micro which is the bedrock of Indian economy. It is a single individual a plumber or an electrician, changing the single item, a switch or a water tube, decides the brand, be it Havels or Phenolex, while attending to a single household anywhere in India, not the highly paid marketing director from major companies. Number three, cream technology. Don't cut the Gordian's knot, disentangle it. Cream technology addresses these issues, particularly the EPP, effort per person methodology. India should adopt Chinese classification of the workforce in each category of MSMEs and disentangle the web of complicated issue areas. Workforce, benefits, skill set, education, financial assistance. Cream technology looks at it in a wholesome manner. That the entangled ropes are systematically isolated and create a force to be reckoned with, rather than the impression that MSMEs need outside support in terms of policies. Connect the micro, small, medium enterprises to large corporate who themselves need this classification to go beyond. Besides a plumber or a roadside auto mechanic, we have people less than five or ten, as Chinese have classified. Less than five, wholesale. Less than ten, retail, accommodation, restaurant, information, software, tenancy, etc. Software people are everywhere. The important aspect of it is the force behind each classified power rope. Four, 
MSMEs, the power base of the Indian economy. MSMEs are the power base for the Indian economy. I present here what I have suggested in response to the a draft national policy for MSMEs provided by the Ministry of MSME Office or the Development Commissioner Policy Division. MSMEs are the ground layers of workforce that keep moving up layer by layer. It is important each layer is assessed and power base being identified and measured as to the progress. This is the GDP GNH combo. I would like the Ministry of MSMEs to look carefully into. Number five, a word about CRIM technology. Unified theory of management, sustainability of profits and growth. The most important aspect I would like the stakeholders to realize that MSMEs are not a miserable lot. Wanting a support cane in every step of their forward march. This mindset must change. The ministry must realize it. My observation and suggestions to the MSMEs as follow. Cream technology is a unified theory of modern management with a corporate atomic structure, establishing the interaction between policies, practices and the people. Establish one nation, one ration court strategy for MSMEs. Podcast episode number 10, MSME's Transformation, by Cream Technology, Observations and Suggestions, submitted to the Ministry of MSMEs. Draft National Policy for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises in India, Analytics vis-a-vis -vis Cream Technology. My observation of the draft policy, uh, number one is uh, vision. Uh, it says, stimulate efficiency and productivity of MSME sector to generate income, employment and become part of domestic and global value chains, taking into account structural transformation, competitive edge and demographic dividend and regional balance. This is exactly what it says. There are about uh, six uh, objectives named. Top in the list, to facilitate, build a vibrant ecosystem for the rapid growth of MSME sector. So we shall look into the vision and objectives and the various aspects of the four issue areas of what we discussed earlier and how the action areas would be uh, taken note of vis-a-vis -vis the cream technology which I have been putting through. My observation on the draft policy number one the background micro small and medium enterprises MSME it's a highly vibrant and dynamic sector of the Indian economy with over 6 crores units, there's about 60 million units, providing employment to 11 crores plus people, there's about 110 million people, just next to agriculture, having 28% share of GDP and 40% of exports. This is what the draft policy uh, information, the background which we have got. Let us examine it further. My uh, suggestions. Current India GDP is estimated at two trillion dollars. MSME share at 28 percent is about 560 billion dollars. India targets 5 trillion as GDP. Assuming 
the same 28% share the MSME share would be 1.4 trillion dollar as and when uh, India reaches 5 trillion assuming it is 28 could be more could be less the objective one states of the draft policy to facilitate build a vibrant ecosystem for the rapid growth of the MSME sector my recommendation for India GDP to reach 5 trillion set the clock to 2024 consequently set the target of 1.4 trillion dollar for MSME also 2024 I shall present you how cream technology takes MSMEs to the target of 2024 reaching to 1.4 trillion my observation from the draft policy uh, from the vision statement number two become part of domestic and global value chains for MSMEs to become part of the domestic and global value chains I'd like you to have a, a look at my uh, accounting for climate change from uh, podcast episode number five where I have analyzed and the chart is given uh, here in, in this particular thing which I had given to the Ministry of MSME countries ranked 1 to 10 on COT emission in total A ranking changes on per capita two denominators COT emission are brought in which we normally do what I had done is that when ranked per square kilometer the ranking changes and uh, provides an economic opportunity for Indian MSMEs South Korea Japan Germany as well as the US possibly UK and uh, other small countries would look toward countries like India for outsourcing industrial products for reaching a net zero CO2 compliant constraints this is an important aspect of uh, uh, CO2 emission and the countries are uh, fully not geared when uh, constrained with uh, the area so there is a big opportunity available that's what I have uh, brought into focus to continue with my suggestion on how to become part of domestic and global value chains as for the vision let me state that uh, MSMEs in India should get ready for getting the outsourced orders from four countries as given South Korea Japan Germany and United States it is a uh, don't expect the anybody else do that it has to be done by themselves is a do-it-yourself uh, planet that we are looking at number two dynamic database uh, CO2 emission uh, scopes plant companies to qualify attract and attract orders uh, MSMEs must get certified as scope one complaint companies uh, please see my uh, podcast episode number six dynamic database CO2 emission scopes complaint companies then if you go further since there is no control over upstream scope to companies input costs have to be reduced and that would be by one investments in alternate energy source number two become certified scope one entity avoid adding fixed costs and three scope three compliant procedures be met on supplies back to those sourcing companies and number four set targets for 2024 1.4 trillion dollars share of MSMEs this is what I have indicated to the Ministry of uh, MSME the third factor in my observation on the draft policy there are about uh, 12 different uh, areas issue areas which I am bringing to light the third factor in objectives covers 
create physical infrastructure and linkages backward and forward amenable to MSMEs ensure access to credit risk capital raw material and marketing facilities for MSMEs also the annexure 3 international best practices SMEs sector for which I have uh, taken as my suggestion a transition to green economy I am a world economic outlook data analytics which I had uh, earlier published as uh, podcast episode number seven information is given in the an extra one number three India tops the list per IMF report on world per capita output it is significant considering the population MSMEs uh, capability is robust and more than excellent on a global level an extra table 1.1.6 summary of world real per capita output as published uh, by IMF October 2021 is given along with you can have a look at it looking at an extra three vis-a-vis -vis per capita output other countries best practices are limited in comparison on account of others low population but this per capita output is a measure of great confidence for MSMEs to move forward let me continue the first point I would like to take under 3 3.1 how India to deal with societal changes post COVID-19 I have referred in my episode number 7 consumer subsidy will not stop number 2 producer subsidy will stop or will have to stop transformation of industry is a critical point for takeoff number three pass on the benefits of downsizing programs in big industries to reduce consumer subsidies so the societal changes if you have to go by what it means really is that the industry has to transform before going to the fourth item on factor 3.1 let me present here what I had earlier given in past podcast episode number 7 transition to green economy that I have given the analogy of a plane I said uh, in the context of mitigating global warming I want to emphasize the two winged planes made up of the society in one side and the industry at the other shall we name it as the essence of I 4.0 the fourth industry revolution one advanced digital technology on one side and two the societal changes at the other this is what it says the government is in the middle the society in the other side one side one one part of the wing and the industry the other that is what uh, I emphasized that time now let me continue with uh, 3.1 the fourth uh, point with 110 million workforce MSMEs become the primary focus of receiving the benefits to reduce their input costs so that the MSMEs become competitive in their pricing attaining financial stability that is lacking now societal changes of 110 million workforce is to be tracked in terms of benefits received by MSMEs mind you MSMEs is one of the biggest uh, largest uh, uh, beneficiaries of the society if they are taken care and you are going to make a huge difference in what the society is looking at the fifth point which I made is that the plane will remain on the tarmac unless the big industries undertake downsizing programs and also reduce their fixed costs 
ye or robbers must create benefits for msmes not add to their burden of cost number 6 pricing to msmes must be subject to cost audit india is very quite familiar with that so uh, introduction or reintroduction of cost audit for msmes uh, supply chain uh, would be very uh, useful and beneficial in this series of what i had already given to the ministry of msme we are looking at uh, factor number 3 where we indicated about uh, the capability as mentioned in the per capita output by imf then we looked into 3.1 societal changes which is a very significant area of uh, uh, going forward msmes with 110 million people or looking at the societal changes for india as a whole we are looking at the opportunities for msmes when 28% of the gdp currently say about uh, 560 billion dollars how it could be taken to 1.4 trillion dollar as and when india's uh, gdp comes to uh, 5 trillion we also indicated that have a set your mark for 2024 it cannot be 5 trillion may may not be able to be achieved by the uh, india as a whole but 1.4 trillion is what msmes have to put their uh, sight on in that i am going to the second factor second area of issue area in uh, continuing with my i am a full the uh, economic outlook data analytics october 2021 there's a very interesting uh, uh, information estimated cumulated real revenue for the global production of selected energy transition metals 2021 to 2040 in trillions of 2020 us dollars i'm sorry billions of uh, uh, 2020 us dollars is a significant aspect of what the opportunities are available for the msmes we had indicated that four countries who are constrained by area very big in economic uh, uh, output uh, japan south korea germany as well as the united states they are all looking at uh, for outsourcing and looking toward uh, india's msmes so if you look at the 2024 target of 1.4 trillion i would very much uh, uh, guide them in terms of getting into this uh, uh, metals these metals are uh, uh, important as to selected energy transition metals the critical metals for green technologies replacing the uh, old ones fossil fuels of 70 trillion to 19 trillion on select energy transition by 2040 is going to be very important because the uh, subsidies would be a dual aspect of uh, carr and cagr that cream technology recommends carr is a reduction rate such as fossil fuel subsidy 70 trillion and cagr of 13 trillion revenue generation of critical metals for green technologies so msmes shall focus this opportunity carr are tracked by cdrr or cagr by cdgr d being the daily this is what msme has to look at if you look at that is a two way process of reducing uh, what is valueless and uh, constructing what is value so that is what uh, cream technology Uh, look set in terms of uh, incremental value of uh, selecting the selected uh, metals from uh, 4 trillion dollar around now 
to 13 trillion dollar in 2014 and 70 trillion dollar now in fossil fuels oil natural gas and coal we got to reduce it to 19 trillion dollar this uh, would be a significant factor in terms of changing the scenario and the opportunities exist uh, as i said earlier is a diy planet we are living in msc means have to look for these opportunities and go toward increasing their revenue and reducing their costs and dropping uh, what is uh, quietly uh, valueless then the societal changes could improve we got to first get it uh, done by the msmes then only it could be passed on to the society the next point is uh, transformation we are looking at the transformation of msmes in terms of opportunities i given the same thing in uh, transition to green economy i am a world uh, economic outlook data analytics being uh, reported uh, in podcast episode number 7 in the transformation i have indicated of course we talked about fossil fuel subsidies then change the imf reporting system looking at that october 2021 report we have data all the data that we have is all static x post facto uh i would very much recommend i am of to talk about uh, what the future is and indicate 20 uh, 24 we are talking about 1.4 trillion msmes that 1.4 trillion how we are going to reach not that uh, just to give uh, i am of reporting system that uh, is going to be 9.5 percent and extrapolating from what it is today in 2021 and all that no so my method uh, of uh, uh, cream technology is to fix the carr and cdrr we found that in critical metals critical metals is 70 trillion dollar and it has to reduce it about uh, 19 trillion dollars by 2040 how are you going to reach everywhere whether it is uh, uh, saudi arabia or india uh, or cop 26 we talked about we talked about in 2030 how the things are being going to be taken into account 2060 2070 each country is putting a, a mark on 2070 and 2060 and uh, that sort of thing that is what is needed for reporting system of ifmf to look into if that is what they have put what have they put for 2070 and what it is today so if you look at the uh, cdrr daily reduction rate if you put uh, other areas then uh, reporting system must change this ex post facto analysis uh, is uh, very primitive coming to the uh, next one uh, policies and practices which i have indicated i am of talks of policy accidents and as i said earlier is uh, Uh, policy and politics we are in a we have to know how to differentiate between policies and what the practices are that's what the cream technology provides you with corporate atomic structure enabling policies practices and people differentiated and made accountable is one uh, uh, advance uh, technology i must say to get going on that change your corporate uh, uh, structure to corporate atomic structure what you are having at the moment uh, is uh, uh, a flat structure changed assess measure what the policies that we have put through what the policies are uh, intended to do and how it is being tracked so policy accidents is a very important aspect which we are not able to do that with the current structure change uh, so that everything is made uh, accountable and practices how net zero integrates each company with the energy policy of reduction in carbon footprint cagr and carr the reduction reduction rate brought to cdgr and cdrr daily then you have the uu policy i have indicated greenhouse emissions reductions by 2030 would be around 45% lower 
compared to 1990 levels when excluding land use emissions and absorptions. That's what uh, EU policy says. Create physical infrastructure and linkages backward and forward, amenable to MSMEs. That's what we indicated. We got to do that. How to do that? I'll let you know. The next uh, point, number four, emerging technologies. Scope on companies do not have control over upstream scope to companies. The emerging technologies would enable, number one, create self-produced energy sources, and two, purchase energy from scope one green or greener companies with increased use of technologies. This is a very critical factor in terms of uh, change in uh, the supply chain. Uh, when the scope to companies are not able to uh, provide because you can't reduce your, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what they call the variable cost because uh, scope to companies have their own uh, problem area. So this is uh, what the emerging technologies have to provide with. Let us go further how it can be done. Greenwashing, point number five. The entire industry, the left wing in our plain analogy of two wings, would become scope on compliant companies, upstream and downstream. Greenwashing is part of the scope 3 reporting system for a scope on company. Scope 1, scope 2, scope 3 or as defined by Professor Walker Hoffman. So, is self-discipline of not only the company but mainly the Individuals, because scope 3 are mainly the individualistic, is nothing to do with the company. So the scope 1 compliant company uh, have uh, full of people who are, uh, are having a sustainable value system. That is the most important aspect of uh, cream technology. Point number 6, uh, financial stability. Scope and companies do not have control over the scope two companies. Now they can influence scope three parameters that are purely individualistic other than their own products. The entire industry would become scope and compliant companies by focusing on their own fixed costs including finance costs to become a self-disciplined units of financial stability. Companies receiving fossil fuel subsidies must be subjected to one cost audit and two pricing of the products. MSMEs would otherwise find it very very difficult. Point number seven causality. There's a clear case of causality for climate oriented funds to be substantially increased for meeting the demands from the industrialized countries. South Korea, Japan, Germany, France, UK as well as the US who could look toward other nations for outsourcing and the matching efficient scope on compliant companies around the globe. These industrialized countries currently find themselves in a claustrophobic capsule of not able to spread the industries within their own countries on account of a lesser area that we find obvious when we measure per square kilometer of carbon emission. MSMEs must look for climate oriented funds to reach the target of 1.4 trillion dollars. Let me state the next point, point number eight, climate stewardship. In our analysis of uh, industrial units as such, when we discuss about the four different countries, South Korea, Japan, Germany, as well as uh, France and uh, UK and as well as the US would be looking for outsourcing units in among uh, MSMEs in India. What they have to look for is that every MSME industrial unit would primarily become scope on companies, taking along upstream companies for the inputs and taking into account scope 3 parameters for supplies to industrialized countries.
this becomes a bounden duty of the countries who are looking for a good units to develop these MSMEs right from the small ones. I'm not telling because uh, uh, less than five got a lot of uh, a uh, lot of uh, uh, software specialists and if you go to a uh, uh, small medium and uh, uh, other industries as well as large MSMEs you will have uh, uh, units that are of uh, excellent uh, uh, of excellence that is what scope one companies uh, are bound to become being certified as a scope one company I can do so uh, cream technology is uh, to do that. I would like uh, everybody to uh, uh, know what is uh, cream technology is all about and uh, get yourself certified as scope one company. And scope three parameters are also made evident. In fact, cream technology has got an excellent way of uh, satisfying the scope three parameters. It is not possible, even Microsoft said scope 3 parameters uh, become very uh, too uh, expensive that is you cannot connect in fact it said the scope 1 scope 2 uh, parameters is nothing compared to the scope 3 parameters how to do that that is where the crim technology come into the being as to how it is measured and reported entire supply chain would become scope and companies transacting trade with each other upstream and downstream assuring climate stewardship. The next point and uh, factor number three number nine sustainable living sustainable investors for outsource industry cluster of companies are less sensitive to short-term returns with long-term commitment. We are looking at the transformation of millions of workforce from all over the world towards sustainable living the hallmark of societal changes that is what we have to put our effort into understanding when we say sustainable living we are talking about 110 million workforce of the MSMEs who are a major part in the society if we have about 1.3 billion people in uh, uh, who are all uh, part of the society in India we are taking care of 110 million people if you look at the agriculture you may is about nearly 55 percent is uh, uh, agriculture farmers uh, uh, they belong to that uh, bigger one nearly about uh, 600 to 700 million people here we are looking at the MSMEs. Do the starting point because uh, uh, farmers, I have already indicated something, uh, published something different. How to take to one trillion dollar Indian uh, uh, agriculture sector. In this MSME, make sure sustainable living is being provided and accounted for among the MSMEs. Then you cover by 110 million. We will succeed. We have to succeed. Once we succeed in this, you can easily apply the same to the farmers. The next point, and a factor number three, number 10, investment fund returns. Cream technology, corporate governance, risk management, earnings, accounting quality, and management quality. For each scope one company, complaint company, would address the issue effectively. There are 170 open-ended process blocks of qualitative and quantitative elements of management for each company with a cream ratings analytics. Creating a matrix of an index of an activity by a process block and corresponding resource area, ensuring the performance standards from each individual within a company is being assured. There are no separate company ratings but performance of each individual within a company is measured. So investment fund returns, anybody who is investing this sustainable uh, investment for MSME can be assured of a, 
as I said, is a very grim technology, is a very sound one. Uh, it takes care of the individual EPP effort purpose. Go ahead, invest. Point number 11, a corporate management operating system. A corporate management operating system is established with a corporate atomic structure, a matter in energy or brought to light. The three laws the corporate shall inherit from us in energy which have an equivalence. I'll explain to that how it is being uh, tackled. In fact, it's very simple as far as a management operating system is concerned. Cream technology is the unified theory of management. Rule expresses the truth and justifies conduct. We are able to see the rule. We are not able to justify the conduct. So establish relationship between policies, practices and the people. Then management, corporate management operating system is well established. Don't forget it. For even for a pin to your plane you have a operating system but not for a organization not for a company please uh, think about it the next point number 12 matter and energy the three laws that govern corporate management operating system law 1 energy is liberated matter that we show in PNL and balance sheet Law number two, matter is energy waiting to happen. That may be lying in the raw material stores or finished goods go down or incomplete project work in different places or the towers of Babel strewn all over the world waiting to be liberated from the present form. That is law number two for you. Law number three, antimatter when it collides with matter forms a pure energy is intangible, is anti matter, is a effort from the individual interested with the task of packing law number two, the matter, the energy is waiting to happen, to law number one, to be energized as a liberated matter. Think about it. My observation, draft policy number six, vision, stimulate efficiency and productivity of MSME sector to generate income employment and become part of domestic and global value chains, taking into account structural transformation, competitive edge, demographic dividend and regional balance. Point number 13, GNH, Gross National Happiness Index, in corporate management operating system. GNH Gross National Happiness Index with metrics and benchmarking derived from nature. Cream report is done effectively for merging the two wings of the plane, industry and societal changes. Further, we are in a position to build GNH Gross National Happiness Index, taking note of the five criteria based on the Global Council for Happiness and Wellbeing. GCHW that lists such process blocks under the following categories. Number one, health. Number two, education. Number three, work. Number four, personal happiness. And number five, cities. For a country that has taken such huge steps, we are running the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana to provide free grains to more than 80 crore that is 800 million people of the country so that they don't face more problems. Prime Minister Modi told the media ahead of Parliament's winter session. The scheme has now been extended to March 2022. I am talking now in March 2022 with a cost of nearly 260,000 crores, 2.6 trillion rupees. The scheme assures that over 80 crore people 
that's 800 million people, have food to cook in their homes. If you look at the vision statement, if you look at the GNH, and the vision statement as stated in the draft policy, the vision statement needs correction to include and measure 3.13 GNH Gross National Happiness Index. This is what uh, cream technology uh, brings an advanced, as I said, uh, is a unified theory of management between what the policy statement of 800 million people are going to be fed and what the result of the policies. There's a very fundamental principle that uh, a draft policy is talking about. That's what I have also said about uh, policy accidents and also the uh, Butras Butras Goli had said about uh, policy and politics and the difference as on today is cream technology. We have seen the MSME draft policy under three factors. Factor number one, set MSME target at $1.4 trillion by 2024. Factor number two, become part of domestic and global value chain, scope one compliant companies. Factor number three, MSME's capability model by topping the list on world per capita output. To become a scope one compliant company, the 13 steps MSMEs shall institute or transition to green economy. Now factor number four, the draft policy says, the primary responsibility of promotion and development of MSMEs is of the state governments. Of the four issue areas that the draft policy states, one, need for policy, number two, vision, number three, objectives, and number four, action areas. I'm presenting you with a fourth factor for action areas. A case study, Gujarat State, target GSDP $1.5 trillion by 2024 with a CAGR of 41.38%, which I prepared at the request of Mr. Prakash Varmura, Chairman Emeritus Varmura Group, the then President of Federation of Industries and Associations, FAA, Ahmedabad, in January 2020. This would assist the states to take on the primary responsibility of promotion and development of MSME within their area of influence. In case of GSDP, it is 200 billion to 1.5 trillion dollars that MSME is maintaining the same ratio of 28% of national GDP would work out to MSME share of 56 billion dollars to 420 billion dollars within the state of Gujarat spread over several industry groups as given in the table herein. Here I am looking at the five steps which are very important in developing the MSME. We are focusing on MSMEs and how they have to connect themselves to attract the opportunity from various countries in terms of uh, outsourcing like uh, uh, Japan and uh, South Korea and Germany and UK and France and the US uh, who are constrained by an area where looking for the outsourcing uh, uh, for outsourcing uh, companies or MSMEs in India. Number one is a cream audit. The database correction is uh, very much required. Every unit shall recast the last five years data. The state data is old by about two years and bring it up uh, up to date. Uh, this is a common factor with uh, Gujarat as well as Maharashtra and the national uh, uh, budget and uh, which we uh, do it on the month of February. Uh, of India, almost most of the most of the states have uh, very delayed uh, submission of uh, data. This has to be corrected. Number two is that uh, lack of qualitative data shall be noted. Cream is for corporate governance, accounting quality, management quality, risk management, that are very important and very uh, significant as per of cream technology, and that shall be noted down because that is how the outsourcing unit from these uh, industrialized countries are going to look at 
whether it's Apple is going to connect to a particular company or uh, other big uh, companies, the latest to this. And they are going to look at your uh, company. What is important is the uh, uh, qualitative data. So uh, get yourself done with the cream technology. Number three, FISCOS. Uh, analyze with a scope one, two, three protocols. Fixed cost is really a burning problem for the MSMEs, particularly the finance cost. They have to control in terms of your uh, total expenditure, establish the individual uh, contribution to that of your uh, uh, work output, productivity, and uh, enabling that uh, by taking that uh, uh, cream ratings were able to attract the best of the uh, outsourcing uh, companies from these various countries so that you are qualified to take that assignment, take that work. That is as simple as that. So in this, the first one is cream audit. What are you today? Get yourself uh, rated and how the cream uh, of your uh, company. That is number one. The next is uh, the second point, uh, CREAM strategy plan, 2024 first for MSMEs and 2030 is an elongated strategy plan every MSME and as well as any company, industrial uh, unit has to necessarily create the plan. Is the most significant important, crucial in developing MSMEs or any industry to a higher level and reaching for a higher level. In this context, when we say a strategy plan, let me quote Dhirubhai Ambani. The most extraordinary statement I had come across in terms of strategy planning exercise is from Dhirubhai Ambani. And he says, our dreams have to be High, bigger. That is where the strategy idea comes. When we are looking at 1.4 trillion uh, economy, 28% of GDP for all as MSMEs put together for the year 2024, dream from the current uh, uh, 560 billion dollars, dream bigger is very important. How you are going to do that? That is a strategy idea. Our ambitions higher. We are looking at the outsourcing possibilities from Japan and uh, South Korea to United States to France to other big uh, industrial countries. That ambition has to be there. If MSMEs are not going to get their uh, capability connected to an ambition to do uh, really well. Uh, then we can't reach uh, 560 billion dollars to 1.4 trillion dollars in the course of about just two years. It is possible. And that is the uh, strategy plan exercise starts. Our commitment deeper. Commitment in terms of uh, you got to put it. If you have got about 200 people, if you are the only about five people, less than five people, uh, the micro uh, to uh, small, medium, large companies put your commitment. 2024, what do you want to do? If your current turnover is one and you want to have 10 crores, put it. If you want to have 100 crores uh, turnover today, wants to 800 crores, put it. You got to have that commitment. Put it in the thing is your own people, you have to do that. And our efforts greater. We are not utilizing the people. You are not utilizing at all. Please be, uh, don't be on the wrong impression that uh, a very dynamic uh, CEO or uh, a few vice presidents will be able to get the job done. The commitment uh, efforts have to come from if you have about 500 people or 5,000 people or 500,000 people. You got to have every one of them. Yes, uh, that's the uniqueness of uh, step two, cream strategy plan 2030. You got to have every one of them. If 4.1 provides the data after the fault lines are identified, idea formed to dream bigger, 
and ambitions Zaya, we land in this cream strategy plan 2030, a thorough analytics and plan 2030 with commitment depot. This is the only exercise each company must undertake. The 170 process blocks in each company of a quantitative 12 process blocks and qualitative 158 process blocks, elements of management. Please note, these 158 process blocks are your raw materials for your 12 process blocks of quantitative items, which are PNL and balance sheet. Without taking cognizance of what you do, that's what I said, rule expresses the truth and justifies the conduct. These 158 process blocks justify the conduct as to the how your individual raw materials are being converted into energy. That is what uh, the exceptional uh, uh, analytics that uh, CREAM technology provides you. The next uh, step number three is CREAM implementation. Uh, given uh, an activity-based cost management, I have also indicated separately, you can uh, have a look at it as to the details, accounting for dreams, uh, a comprehensive analysis of uh, IBCM and activity-based cost management. MSMEs have to look into the important aspect of uh, profits and growth. That is the main aim. That is the main problem. We have any number of problems or there, not allowing the MSMEs to settle down and uh, not able to generate profits and as well as uh, go for a real growth. Despite all the opportunities and despite 28% of the GDP are being taken care by the uh, taken care by the MSMEs. It's a very important aspect. So IBCM provides that uh, cream technology. There are five principles. Uh, principle number one, what gets measured gets managed out of 158 qualitative elements of management. We are not able to manage because uh, as we say, the rule expresses the truth and justifies the conduct. The conduct of individuals we are not able to measure. When we are not able to measure them, we are not able to manage. That's the most important aspect of why. It has a self-analysis uh, uh, as to why such a thing happens. It, it holds good for any number of companies also. Even if uh, companies that are going for a, a public IPO and all that, why they are not able to manage. And uh, that is a very critical point of observation. And I would like MSMEs to have a look at that. Principle number two is uh, measure quant qualitative elements of management, like code of conduct, uh, business principles, uh, core of business principles uh, and the supply chain management scope 1, scope 2, scope 3 there are any number of such of these things uh, or everything is a qualitative the scope 3 is a completely qualitative and individualistic uh, scope 2 of upstream companies are uh, quantitative but they have no control and scope 1 is your own where we commit ourselves for uh, unnecessary fixed costs including uh, including the finance costs so that is because of the measurement, not of the quantity elements, but the qualitative method methodology adopted by a company of the individuals. Uh, it could be the chief executive, it could be the owner. Mostly MSMEs are owner driven and they tend to, tend to spoil the broth. It's a very important aspect of uh, how you approach that and qualitative elements of management have to be measured properly for which the corporate atomic structure, that is principle number three being introduced, which is the policies and practices and uh, the people and uh, how it is being done. Then uh, uh, principle number four is the return on intangible. The training would be given, a cream implementation would be done. And the return on intangible is the one which is uh, very useful, like uh, how 
uh, individuals does numerator being action or inaction and uh, denominator being the intangible intangible is a power base for each person the pulsating energy each person does we did discuss about the matter energy and uh, the law 3 law 3 is intangible which uh, individual whether it's a potter or a nuclear scientist I got the equal capability so it is number one that is uh, denominator is one that is intangible action or inaction is uh, either one or zero if you act upon or if you do not act upon so you have a binary value for each and every uh, action as well as an action simultaneously and you create index of inactivity uh, that is what uh, return on intangible does we are in a position to do that for the extremely uh, uh, comprehensive analysis of say 1.5 trillion dollar 2024 uh, which we uh, try to do that for uh, uh, Gujarat state uh, uh, domestic product then you are able to identify not just the companies each individual mind you when you go for a company when you go for the objects they are infinite but if you look at the uh, number of people who are uh, the denominators of well, they are finite the number of people are say about 70 million people of Gujarat and they are the one uh, those who are uh, in a position to part of the workforce maybe about 15 million people and what the 15 million people are going to uh, do to create the atmosphere of uh, uh, from 200 billion dollars now uh, GSDP to 1.5 trillion is a collective energy force that is going to bring the uh, possibility of getting 1.5 trillion GSDP by 2024 that is a return on intangible the last principle number five emergent property phenomenon I'm talking about it uh, uh, one after uh, which is very simple the management is a science which has been brought as a science it was a uh, logical construction of uh, the company's uh, uh, company's organization so but it is very simple once it is connected to the nature with the best of the metrics and best of the benchmarks there's no problem at all it's because no implementation is very simple as I said we are in the DIY planet uh, I don't have to run around to each and every company as a consultant do this and do that you yourself will be in a position to do that I'll tell you how to do that if you have a fine number of people MSMEs uh, in a company or uh, just 5 or 50 or 100 or 200 uh, it is a very simple process that is what the emergent property phenomenon is the fit as a fiddle and MSMEs can grow phenomenally is very important so effort per person is the commitment deeper of strategy plan 2030 by each individual in each organization I given that uh, figure 9.1 EPP if a person how the 1.5 uh, trillion dollar is going to be achieved from uh, CAGR uh, of uh, the, uh, previously or 2012 to 2018 and then goes up to 2024 uh, which is uh, equated in each and every one of the uh, areas agriculture forestry mining manufacturing electricity uh, construction trade repair services transport storage financial services everything is being monitored and tracked and uh, being uh, measured so that is going to make a huge difference for us to look into it the implementation is very simple understanding is very easy and uh, you can uh, get going uh, on the day one in my opinion before going to the cream training is point number four let me provide you with uh, my observation of the action areas and a para 8 draft national policy for MSMEs it says in the light of the vision and objectives specific action areas which need deliberations for a national policy to guide motivate and handhold states whereas intergovernmental actions define potential actions the sectoral issues provide scope of work 
in respective areas to be taken up by various stakeholders. This are number one, intergovernmental roles and responsibility. Number two, legislation and regulatory framework for MSMEs in India. Number three, access to finance, financial assistance for MSMEs. Number four, technology, upgradation and adaptation. Number five, skill development. Number six, knowledge management. Number seven, ease of doing business. Number eight, development of MSME code. And number nine, exit code. Now, these are the points which had been brought out by the action areas in the draft national policy for MSMEs. Now, the training and uh, obtaining the full information on it, uh, I shall present uh, by Cream Technology uh, next. The next is a step number four, Cream Training. I'm giving a chart here, Cream Ratings Framework, that will individually address each of the action areas under Para 8, as stated in National Draft Policy for SMEs. MSMEs. If you look at the uh, 10, 9 areas which had been given, number 1 and 2, that is intergovernmental roles and responsibility. Number 2, legislation and regulatory framework for MSMEs in India. These two constitute policies. When you come to the rest, the policies uh, framework uh, in the cream uh, technology is governed under accounting quality and management quality that are ensuring uh, sustainability of value system. So these two policies the state government have to uh, look into uh, will come under the management quality. Accounting quality is being governed by an external uh, uh, institute of charter accountants in India. Management quality now we have pinpointed two. It could be 20, it could be 100, it could be any number. All that management quality is a compendium of various policies that are needed for uh, various factors, but in this case, it's a MSME that we are talking about. So that is one. Number two, practices, if you look at, out of the uh, nine issue areas that we have put in the uh, action areas, number eight, practices covering corporate governance, skill development, risk management, technical upgradation, ease of doing business, financial stability, would fall under sustainability of efficiency and fiscal responsibility. Once the policies are set, it has to be tracked with the equation return or intangible, whether it reaches to the particular MSME individual within the MSME company, a small company of five people, or a large company of 500 or 1,000 people, whether each and every person gets that uh, uh, tracking of each person is being tracked with the equation return or intangible. Meaning, if you look at the MSME, 110 million workforce performance is measured. I given the details. I will also like you to have a look at blueprint of uh, trillion uh, dollar Indian agriculture 2024. Each former contribution is being measured. So that is the training I would like uh, uh, individual MSME had to look at and uh, uh, make use of the technology, cream technology, that is going to help uh, the development of individual. That is uh, uh, what we are looking at, the societal ch changes of 110 million workforce performance. And the last one, is step number five, cream action plan, uh, which is the emergent property phenomenon. When we are looking at the, the entire uh, force, of MSMEs or 110 million uh, people governed and have to be tracked for their societal changes. When we go through the process of corporate uh, autonomy structure and the principle of return on intangible and the very methodical assessment and tracking of how they are being uh, uh, benefited and who are the people in charge of policies, how they are running, particularly the government sector by creating a policy by itself has uh, no meaning unless it's being tracked and that is why it is there in the management quality and we are connecting that with the corporate governance the corporate governance and the management quality it goes by 
the Newton's third law. If there is a management quality, you have created a policy, then there is a possibility of getting the uh, corporate governance being measured. If you are not creating the policy, you are not able to measure. That is the uh, principle uh, number one of uh, IBCM. That is what gets uh, measured, gets managed. So the uh, principle of uh, Newton's uh, third law applies here. And uh, what comes out is that uh, emergent property. The MSME unit of five people or 500 people becomes uh, uh, fit, completely fit enough to be looked at by the industrial, uh, highly advanced industry uh, countries like Japan and all that. Uh, how they are? Can I give outsource my work to these particular MSMEs? Single MSME. We are not talking about in general. So that is the emergent property. When you go through the process of creeping technology, because uh, that is a very important aspect of uh, uh, development, which MSMEs uh, should go through that. So what happens is that uh, emergent property phenomenon, as a Nobel laureate uh, Murray Gelman says, you don't have to add anything more to get something more. Something like a robust corporate yoga, fit as a fiddle. In the morning, if you go and do the uh, your own yoga, that's what you do when you enter the uh, factory premises. Everything is very simple. Uh, that's what we have been talking about. Then there is a ABC of cream. A for auditors, B for bankers, C for the company concern. A track of energy force leading toward resurgence of MSMEs. Banking has been the singular force that had put hurdles on the emergence of MSMEs. It's very important. The auditors uh, have to take, uh, take note of it and they have to develop the training methodology of uh, uh, tracking and measuring the sustainability of value system. It depends on them. And uh, bankers, the B, have to necessarily help. It's a question of how uh, uh, they are doing it with the company concern of 500 uh, people in among the MSMEs. It's very important. Access to financial financial assistance for MSMEs. Uh, ease of doing business between uh, MSME and the concerned banker has to be brought into the priority should we ever hope to galvanize MSMEs as a competent force in the Indian economy. Uh, this is a very crucial aspect of uh, change of work. I'm happy about uh, uh, the Ministry of uh, MSMEs have come out with a draft policy. It's a question of more and more uh, analytics of how you are going to uh, take the policies to the MSME, a single individual, and collectively about 110 million uh, workforce for the change in the societal changes.